with another video of 10 items that I have sold in the past two or three months. Hey, uh, anyone uh, know where you can get a haircut? I'm thinking about this, and if we've got another week and a half or so of this, uh, this is going to get crazy for me. I've, uh, I don't like my long hair, but anyhow, hopefully, I can only imagine some of the services that when this opens up, what the problems we're going to have with uh, haircuts. Think about haircuts, uh, nail salons. Maybe nail salons might be a little bit slow at first, but everybody's going to need a haircut. I mean, it's going to be pretty tough. There's going to be some lines for that. Women who have had appointments canceled, hairdressers, they're going to be working 24-7 trying to, trying to get everybody back into line with their hair. It's going to be crazy. I do know one guy who's got something I've been looking at, and that's Commonwealth Picker. That guy's hoarding that flow bee. Every time I watch those videos, I look up and I see that flow bee, and he hasn't sold it yet. It's been like months. I think he was holding out for this. I think he's going to put it up for auction. You watch. But either that or he's using it. All right, let's get back to uh, what sold. Let's take a look at 10 items that sold here. All right, number one up is some Kodak vintage darkroom graduate film developing equipment. And uh, normally this little box only has one, but there were three in there. And like I have said, uh, people are not paying attention to 35 millimeter camera stuff. Uh, a lot of them. So you can really slide in into that area. And uh, this sold for $24.95. It was $3.99 at Goodwill. And uh, I already received positive feedback back on it. And I put $2.95 for shipping. I was trying to keep it in line with what I had saw online. Quick flip though. I know it would sell. All right, golf clubs. Uh, I'm not a big picker of the golf clubs i will look i look for the specifics that's the only thing i look for specific brands i will usually only pick up wedges drivers and some specialty hybrids uh, or sets complete sets that show promise uh, 98 percent of the stuff that you see in these thrift stores when it comes to golf and tennis is garbage so uh, you kind of know when it is worth something this was a Ping G2 green dot. There's many different colors, black, red. They're just dots. It's just a system that they use for lie, loft, length, all that kind of stuff. And it's a regular flex. I find that they all do well, but stiff flex tends to be a little bit better seller in many areas. And shipping these are about nine to 10 bucks uh, all the way across the country. So it's pretty straightforward here. $28.95 and the club I remember paying was $3.69. Alright, this one took a little while. Um, there was some comps on this when I bought it. I did buy it at a Goodwill and I paid $7.99 for it. It was an adjustable picture light, solid brass, LED, and adjustable. Had a lot of watchers, just nobody really went after it. And finally it sold for $50 and they paid $12.95 on the shipping. Oh boy, this is a good one here. I got my uh, myself, you know, every time I see these 35 millimeter, ca millimeter cameras that I kind of know of, I get excited. Well, I picked this Canon up and it's a waterproof one. And if I if it worked, meaning everything was in, in working condition, $100. Well, it wasn't. The back wouldn't lock. There's a little latch pin in there, cheapy plastic thing that was broken. So anyhow, I had to sell it for $38.95 as basically as is. Like I said, hey, if, it, if, if people will fix this stuff, they know how to fix that. I know how to fix other things. This, I didn't know how to fix. So the buyer paid $9.95 for shipping and it sold in as is condition. Oh, and there you go. I got a good friend, Brian, and Brian is a, He's a really good picker, and he's been doing it a long time. And he's he has a lot of bobbleheads. He has a big bobblehead collection, and I give him I tease him a lot about it. So I happen to find uh, three bobbleheads here. One, this one here sold. It is shirtless Joe shirtless Jumbo. It's Joe Thornton of the San Jose Sharks. Seven ninety nine at Savers, and uh, it sold for sixty five dollars plus nine ninety five shipping. 
So again, bobbleheads, some bobbleheads are worth some good money. All right, now this one was difficult for me because it sat in my garage. This was one thing that sat in my garage because I didn't quite know what to do with it. Uh, I purchased it at the flea market. I paid $20 for it. I did pay up. And I really didn't check it out there. It had a tag. It looked new. It was new. But it was missing this bassinet uh, portion. So I didn't know what to do with it. If I had that bassinet, I would have probably got 150 to 170 in that range. So I finally decided, hey, I'm just going to let it go. Uh, I put it in a box, had it all boxed up, figured the shipping to New York, what that would be, minus 20, minus fees, and what I would make. So it ended up um, costing me, I think, about $35 to ship. So I made good money on it. I made about 45, 50 bucks overall. I believe after fees and everything were done in that range, maybe 60. But it sold quickly. And I had a box, all I had to do was label it, boom, it got to her. She was very happy. And that's all that matters. So again, you know, it was brand new. And uh, it was too big to shoot on my counter, so I shot it out on my patio. Oh, here you go. Another part of the Apple family here. This isn't. This was from my pick where I picked up three Apple things: keyboard, this hard drive, and the conversion DOS to uh, to Macintosh, that kind of thing. So this little, little guy, it was all I bought all that stuff for like ten bucks, and I sold this item for forty nine ninety five, and the buyer paid twenty four ninety five shipping. I remember this went to Seattle, so I probably made ten bucks off the shipping. It's probably only $15 up to Seattle FedEx. So old Apple stuff is going to sell. You're going to do good with it. All right, next one. We got three to go. Oh, here it is. Right, here's the keyboard. I'm, I'm going blind. I just put all these in, so it's kind of new for me sometimes to look at it. But here's the keyboard. It splits, it splits and opens up like that. It's an Apple adjustable. Now... The one thing, I probably could have got maybe 10 bucks more out of this. Uh, I didn't see the feet. There were these little feet and uh, for the back of the keyboard that angle it. And when I went to go ship it, I found them. So I put them in there with a note, and uh, the buyer was real happy. So Apple adjustable keyboard with the mouse, $50, and the buyer paid $7.95. Again, this was a northern part of the country. I think Seattle again, that area. And sold for fifty dollars and seven ninety five. So I sold all three of those items: fifty, fifty, and two hundred. I made three hundred dollars off my ten dollar investment selling vintage Apple stuff. All right, this I know. This was a Savers, and it this was a. At the back part of Savers, there's a little room where everything comes out, and a lot of pickers sometimes we sit around there and talk and wait for stuff to come out. I'm sitting there and I, I just happened to turn back and there was this box and I thought, what the heck's in this box? It was $12.99 and I opened it up and it was this new uh, commemorative Statue of Liberty Centennial wall clock. And a gentleman, I had it up for $139, I think, $139, might be more, but $139. He asked what I would take for it. He just sent me a note and I said, I'd take $109.95. Uh, I knew where he had lived, and I made like 20 on the shipping, so uh, I made $129 probably on this thing, and he was very happy. He got a really nice buy. I uh, got positive feedback already received on it. So, again, another new item. I don't know how long it was sitting there, but everybody else had a shot at it. All right, last item for this one. I'm going to give you a tip on this one. This is a simple book. Um, this was part of my book buy, and I got four of these. There's a green one, and then there's also, I think, an older version that's kind of whitish. The green one is the more desirable one, the green cover. This is Cracking the Coding Interview. So what this is, is it has programming questions and solutions that some of these companies will ask. This book is generally you are blocked on Amazon. If you could sell it on Amazon, you might get 35 bucks for it on Amazon. 
But for some reason, the author or somebody has blocked it, and you just can't get it. So pick the book up anyhow, especially if you get it for a buck. Put it up for about $19.75. You'll make $15, $13, $14, $15, whatever. But it, they will sell. You just have to be at the price that is sold or selling. Uh, but they're quick and easy. So I got four of these. So I made, let's call it $12 off of that. I, I paid $1.69 for each book. So 40 48 50 bucks. Call it 50 bucks minus my $8. Pretty simple. And they're all gone. I don't have any more. They sold. All right. Another set of 10. I'm having fun now. Just kind of getting out 10 at a time just so you guys can check it out. Um, I'll do another one. I'll keep going. I'm just going to keep making videos and then I'll post them up every other day. And hopefully you guys can see kind of what I've been doing. You'll just see that I'm going backwards. All right. Hey, I really appreciate it. If you guys like the videos, give it a thumb up, thumbs up. And if not, subscribe. All right, guys, I'm going to keep doing more. I'll talk to you soon.